If you want to know what the final road poneglyph says, then you're in luck, because I have an exclusive translation here. So let's see what we have, and yep, just as I thought. It's telling you all to subscribe to the Grand Line Review for more awesome One Piece content delivered conveniently straight into your YouTube feed. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have the first chapter review of 2020, and my god is it a massive one, being chapter 967, Roger's Adventure. So first and foremost, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone currently watching this video. This has been a pretty painful time for all involved, because obviously the scans for this chapter dropped in late 2019. But the official release wasn't until, well, now in 2020. So thank you all for being so patient, but I think it will be worth it, because we have a gigantic chapter to take care of here. So much so that I honestly think I need to break my policy of not going through the chapter sequentially. I mean, usually I just go through a list of moments in the order in which they impacted me, but there is just so much going on here that I really do think I need to just go through through my thoughts on this chronologically. And right off the bat, we have an incredible opening panel that both mentions Skype here, as well as Garn Fall, and shows the incredibly unexpected sight that is Water 7. And I wasn't expecting to see Water 7 in this flashback, because while Tom was obviously the creator of the Aura Jackson, I thought that Roger would probably be done with the island and not need to check back in, but at the same time, it does make a lot of sense, because it's so close to Skype here, so why not check in on small pals? And there really is no greater narrative purpose to being on the island than that, but it's not as if one is needed. This is the kind of adventurous nostalgia that I really love, and it was so good to see Tom, Kokoro, Iceberg, and Frankie again in their younger incarnations. And this is because Water 7 holds a particularly special place in my heart, because that island was a primary focus when I started reading the series about a billion years ago, so seeing it pop up in the manga again really is like I've gone back in time to high school, and we're reading the comparatively early days of the series. The highlight of the Water 7 part is definitely Frankie though, because I mean, what? It is absolutely insane to think that he has met Kozuki Odin before. I mean, what the actual hell? I guess it does make a lot of sense as to why he wouldn't have brought it up before now, because he probably doesn't even know Odin's name, but that is a crazy cool little connection there. So whenever we go back to the present day of Wano, it's going to be very difficult to get the thought of Frankie having met Odin out of my head. Plus not only that, but he was even sort of invited to become one of the Roger Pirates, which I think officially makes Frankie the only character to have been invited aboard the vessel of two individual pirate kings. And while it isn't shown in this chapter, assumedly Frankie has met many of the other Roger pirates as well, including the captain himself, as well as Rayleigh, Shanks, and maybe even Buggy. It's a really bizarrely cool connection happening here. Frankie does of course refuse to join the Roger pirates, which is a sentence I really never thought I'd be saying, but this is a reference to his childhood because his pirate parents notoriously threw him overboard and left him to drown before he was rescued by Tom. I do think it's interesting that Oda is bringing this up again because it could be nothing more than a harmless callback and an excuse used to have a nice interaction between him and Odin, but I do also wonder if this is planting a seed for an eventual revelation of Frankie's parents, or even a second flashback for him at some stage in the future. It's something that could be very easily explored, but then again, it could be something that's also left here with no more information necessary. Some interesting stuff comes up before the crew land on Water 7 though, specifically in regards to Roger very, very insanely luckily stumbling upon two road poneglyphs, one of which is known by Odin to be on Wano, and Nekomamushi and Inuarashi obviously know where the other one is on Zo. However, we are also told by this point that Roger has attained a rubbing of Big Mom's road poneglyph, so sadly we won't get to see that event in this flashback, but it is accompanied by a nice little drawing of a younger Charlotte and Lynn, which is always wonderful to see. And as for the fourth road poneglyph, well, it is very, very casually shown later on in the chapter, like seriously, you'd expect a bit more focus to be put on a revelation of an amazing object like this that has and continues to be one of the greater mysteries of the series, but no, there it is, drawn in a tiny panel. In any case, we'll get to that in due course. But for now, comically right at the beginning of the chapter, we see what I think is the famous scene of Shanks and Bucky arguing about the North and South Pole. And I think it's implied that this is where this particular argument happened, because they're wearing the same outfits and they also get scolded by Ray Lee. So if this is indeed the case, then that is just so damn cool to finally put a great a context on an event that we saw, what, over 20 years ago now? But after this section, we are treated to a bit of a montage set to Pink Sake, which I'm very much looking forward to seeing the anime adapt because they tend to nail musical sequences like this. One very interesting thing is that it would appear that the Roger Pirates sail past the bridge nation of Tequila Wolf, which is where Robin was sent by Bartholomew Kuma from Sabadi. And I find this intriguing because Tequila Wolf is in East Blue. So it would seem that the Roger Pirates adventure was not Grand Line and New World exclusive. It's kind of strange though, because it's immediate just juxtaposition is the Roger Pirates arrival at Sabadi and then diving down to Fishman Island. So if we take this chronologically, it's a bit strange because Sabadi was really close to Water 7. So it seems like
second odd choice to go to East Blue from Water 7, and then all the way back to around that same area in order to get to Sabadi. Unless, of course, this is not to kill the wolf and it's another bridge being built somewhere in the Grand Line, but oh, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe it is and the world nobles are just keen to construct these things all over the world, but at the moment with the snow and everything, it's just identical to Tequila Wolf, so a bit of a weird jump in location happening here. Diving down to Fishman Island though, and we actually spend a surprising amount of time here, which begins by showing us the scene of Roger hearing the Sea Kings once again, except this time Odin is revealed to be aboard, and he can also hear them, which makes all the sense in the world, because if Momonosuke can hear the voice of all things, then why not Odin? It was another nice little piece of connective tissue within the series though, and I love that this chapter is essentially a gigantic adventure through the history of One Piece, only shown from the perspective of a different crew in a different time. My favourite part of this entire section though is definitely seeing a young Madame Charlie, because she is just, oh, so damn adorable. Fortune telling at the age of three years old. And the best panel is the one featuring her and Roger, because you can see just how tiny Charlie is with her cutesy shark tail and everything. Getting into the uh, serious stuff though, this is the location that contains the infamous Final Road Poneglyph, which is absolute insanity, because as I said before, it is just so casually revealed to us. Of course, there is still a whole ton of mystery in regards to where it is now, because obviously it was not present when the Straw Hats visited Fishman Island. An initial natural thought would then be that this is the Poneglyph that Big Mom had on Whole Cake Island, which may have been obtained when she took over Fishman Island, but then again earlier in the chapter, Roger claimed that he had already gotten a rubbing of Big Mom's Road Poneglyph, and the other two were confirmed to be on Zoe and Wana respectively, so this has to be the final one. And an explanation I could think of is that the Poneglyph was acquired and hidden by Whitebeard for reasons unknown, and I only bring that up because Fishman Island was under his protection for a huge amount of time. Or well, there's also the idea that once again, for whatever reason, Reason, Shanks may have traveled to the island and taken it. Otherwise though, I guess it would have been possible to have it stolen, although taking a poneglyph like that would be such a mammoth effort. In all honesty though, the bigger question on my mind is why King Neptune didn't tell Robin that they once had another poneglyph. A bit weird in retrospect. I mean, it wouldn't have been so hard to say, oh yeah, we used to have another one of these as well. In any case, what we now have is a new spin on an old mystery. Continuing into the new world, we proceed with our montage, one of the islands featured in which has to be Raijin Island, which I think shows Odin being shocked by lightning. And for anybody who doesn't remember this location, this is where Aruj visited after entering the new world, as well as one of the locations that the Straw Hats could have gone to before ultimately ending up on Punk Hazard. It's always nice to see and or hear of this location because it's one of the islands that I would love to visit most and solve the mystery behind. However, we are so far removed from it at this stage that I'm not sure that will ever happen. In a twist of fate though, Toki then comes down with an illness, conveniently upon the borders of Wano, which she always wanted to visit anyway. And this ends up providing a good explanation as to why Nekomamushi and Inorashi did not sail all the way to Laugh Tail, because none of Odin's other retainers actually know her or Odin's children. Even more interestingly though, we can see that Wano has begun to build the factories that would eventually go on to ravage its beautiful landscape as well as its citizens, which is clearly the work of Orochi and not something instigated by Kaido, at least not directly, because Kaido is certainly not present at this point in the timeline. But there is always a chance that he is, you know, pulling the strings from the shadows, feeding orders to the user of the Mane Mane no Mi to make Orochi implement some groundwork for Kaido's ultimate world war. In any case, I think we'll be finding out exactly what has occurred on Wano very soon, but it was a really sad moment watching Odin refuse to so much as look at his home country. And it does make me wonder if at this stage, he could have taken a good step towards preventing the eventual downfall of Wano by at least removing Orochi from power, but I guess we'll never know. Moving on to Zoe now, and wow, that was some unexpected heartbreak right here. I mean, I should have known this moment was coming because the entire chapter had been showing us previously known Roger moments, but the second a young Pedro showed up, I was just broken. I can't believe the effect that Jaguar Mink has on me, especially seeing his young plucky eyed form. And yes, pun intended with that plucky eyed comment. But now on the way to Laugh Tale, we receive an answer to another long-standing mystery, which is whether or not Buggy and Shanks actually set foot on the island. And the answer is no. At least not during Roger's voyage, because Buggy comes down with a sudden illness and Shanks, being the ever good friend he is, volunteers to stay behind. Although it's safe to say that they probably did find out what the One Piece was, and that might be why neither of them have attempted to travel to the island since. I mean, actually there's no guarantee that Shanks and the red-haired pirates haven't been there, but I feel like it would be a bit weird for Shanks to have been there because it is such a monumental thing to do. So much so that it results in the immediate crowning of a pirate king. So I think it should probably just go, you know, Joy Boy, Roger, Luffy, nothing else. And speaking of, this chapter ends in one of the greatest panels I've ever seen in the series, with the crew having found the One Piece and simply laughing as a result, then proceeding to name the island, Laugh Tale. And because that name has finally made an official appearance in the manga, that is now how I'm going to be referring to it. I'm afraid that the age of Laugh Tale is no more, and all hail the new age of Laugh Tale. 
And really, I'm still a bit in shock of this. Landing on Laugh Tale and finding the One Piece has always been a dream far enough away that I've never actually thought too much about it. But I think that this is perfect. No other reaction would have been satisfying in the slightest. Because there is no amount of other emotion that could continue to contribute to the mystery of the One Piece like a ton of laughter and simple joy. Because even though we are so, so close to the treasure, we still have no idea what it is. In fact, after this, we probably have even less of an idea of what the One Piece could be than we did before. The thing I'm most excited about though, is that when we do eventually get to see Luffy and the Straw Hats finding it, I think that we're going to get a mirror panel with Luffy laughing exactly like Roger here and the rest of the Straw Hats following suit. Except when that day comes, we as the readers will be in on the joke. And rather overwhelmingly, that's kind of chapter 967. I know that there are lots of bits here and there that I didn't go over, like the former leader of Zo and other such things, but I'm kind of fried after this. A lot of the chapter was of course spoiled for me due to the huge difference between scans and the official translation dropping, but it was still an incredible journey through the history of One Piece. One of the most perfect chapters I recall ever reading. It's such an impossibly strong start to 2020 because I honestly don't think anything else we see this year could top this. And if it can, well, then this is going to be one hell of a great year for One Piece. But that pretty much does it for chapter 967. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.